Move over Oscars, here's PETA's Oscats, the awards for movies that use their platform to spread a pro-animal message or theme. And the winners are next on The PETA Podcast. Welcome to The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guglielmo, your host for this inside look at animal rights. Brought to you by PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. On today's episode, when the Oscars come out, you know it's time for its animal-loving friend, PETA's Oscats. PETA's way of honoring the best films of the year that had a special theme or message that was especially animal kind or friendly or a production that did film in an innovative way to reduce the number of animals needed in a film. This year, unlike the Oscars, where everything, everywhere, all at once seems to be the one film that is getting all the heat and attention, in the Oscats, animation films stole the show. Here's my conversation with PETA's Courtney Penley on The PETA Podcast. AFTV, the Animals in Film and Television Division here at PETA, tracks all film and TV productions, and we work with creatives to help them make their productions kind for animals. And um, after screening practically everything that comes out each year, we like to recognize a handful of those films and stars for compassionate and animal-friendly messaging, which is what we're doing here with the Oscats. This is our sixth annual Oscats. Big now- deal. Yeah. And now the sixth annual, and I think we've covered most of them, except during the pandemic, it was kind of hard, but Mm -hmm. we're we're coming at this year because the movies are roaring back. And it's important to note that you look at everything, everything out there and to make sure, is it how they're treating animals or just in how they're messaging uh, about animals in their movies? Yeah, there's a large uh, span of what we're looking at here. So we recognize uh, films, actors, crew members, to whoever it might be that's helping to promote compassionate compassionate filmmaking for animals. So whether that means using faux fur instead of animal hide, which is what we're awarding this year in Black Panther's Wakanda Forever, or featuring a protest demonstration and storyline on anti-vivisection in The Bad Guys, the animated film. We are just looking at all little moments and big moments and opportunities to celebrate filmmakers. If people look at the regular Oscars and then they look at the Oscats, there may be some, you know, some intersection, but these are some some of these films you may not have caught those moments. People, people may not have noticed them. And it's worth, you know, saying, hey, look. This was a moment in film in 2023. It's worth it. And here are the people who exemplified compassion in in film. That's how we feel. While there are many Oscar contenders that we absolutely loved and screened, what we're really looking for are these moments that, that are just so, whether they're tiny, whether they're big, they're just moments that are great for animals. And that's not what the Oscars uh, committee is looking for, right? So we make our own rules when it comes to these. Some of our categories will cross over with the actual Oscar awards. So we have the best animated feature, for instance, which went to Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Um, Now, what are they looking for when it comes to a best animated feature? I'm not quite sure, but for us, it was the heart-touching adoption messaging that was featured throughout. They called attention to the plight of homeless dogs, the horror of animal hoarding, and they also continued a conversation from the first film on uh, declawing and just how horrendous that is. So yeah, there's there's probably not that much crossover between the Oscats and the Oscars, but we are just having a lot of fun with it and we're able to shine a light on some issues that people may not be aware of um, and how those affect animals. Okay, so let's talk just briefly about Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Kind of biased when there's a, a, a character named Puss, right? It's an <laughs> animal. It's kind right. of biased. Yeah, I don't know if it's it's biased necessarily. I mean, I love the Puss in Boots movies and I went into this one thinking it's going to be fun, but, you know, they're not, they're just trying to be comedic and have a fun adventure. And I don't know that there's necessarily going to be any great animal messaging. Well, boy, was I wrong. 
there's a storyline with um, a dog named, well, Puss is on his last life. So he ends up going to this, this house and it turns out to be the house of a hoarder. And it's just awful. I mean, he's miserable there. It's crowded and dirty and unsafe. And he meets a little dog who has no name and will later uh, get be known as Perito. And this dog has suffered so many horrors at the hands of humans that just didn't want him. He was thrown in a dumpster and uh, the people tried to drown him, but he's always positive and upbeat. And in the end, Puss and Kitty Softpaws, the two main characters, end up adopting Perito. Well, oh, that's a spoiler. Spoiler alert. It was okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's so good. But... Spoilers. But yeah, it's just so sweet. It's such a good movie, whether or not the lead was a cat, you know, or not. We just loved it. And and one of the characters is named Chorizo, huh? Perito. Oh, Perito. Oh, not Chorizo. Chorizo. I'm Chirizo. thinking non-vegan things. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. Now, had they named the dog Chorizo, we might have called, uh, written them and asked them to rename the dog Soyrizo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Puss in Boots, The Last Witch. What, what, what do you call their award? What did they win? So they actually won our best animated feature. Oh, we just right. loved it so much um, all around. You know, it was just an all around great movie, great cast, great messaging. And um, we want people to know just how great it is. So best animated feature. Another movie that won is a movie called Fresh. Tell me about Fresh. Yeah, Fresh is uh, not for the faint of heart. Definitely need to go into that one with a strong stomach. <laughs> but um, Fresh won our Meat is Murder Award because it offers an artful allegory for eating meat and just how cruel it is by putting humans in the place of animals that are awaiting slaughter. So Wait a minute. That 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 sounds almost like, uh, you know, not politically correct, putting humans in there, huh? <laughs> Yeah, but maybe it'll make viewers stop and think for a minute about and be disturbed by where their meat really comes from when they choose to eat animals. And so, um, again, it's a horror film. It's it's body horror, lots of blood and gore. So if you go into that one, just have a tight stomach, <laughs> be aware that it's not going to be a feel good film. But we do think that people should check it out. So this is fresh. And it was it in the theaters? I mean, I imagine or, or was it? Yeah, I don't believe that Fresh went to the theaters. We watched it on streaming. A couple of us watched it. One person watched it and was like, oh my gosh, I just loved it. All of us in animals and film and TV are uh, huge horror nuts. And so we were lining up to take turns to watch this film <laughs> and decide whether or not the messaging was award worthy. And well, anytime you question whether or not meat is murder, I mean, this this sort of brings it home, right? When you put yourself in the place of the animals. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any question that meat that comes from an animal is murder. I mean, the fact of the matter is that that animals are killed for their meat and it's not, there's no need in it, right? We've got so many great vegan alternatives out there. So people should watch this film, stop and think about it for a minute. And hopefully they will make the transition. They can go into our website actually and get a vegan starter kit and help them figure out a way to transition off of animal meat. Yeah. And if you're already vegan, take your non-vegan friends to see it and see if, uh, you know, they transform, <laughs> I, yeah. I guess. All right. So the, then another film that you're honoring is The Bad Guys. What is The Bad Guys? Oh, man, The Bad Guys is another really great animated film. So uh, we we loved a lot of animated films this year. And that's why we decided to award Puss in Boots with the best animated feature. And The Bad Guys won our Test Students, Not Animals Award. Hmm. So again, here at PETA, we make up uh, our own rules when it comes to award titles. You won't find test students, not animals, in the official Oscars category. But in this, there is a group of notorious criminals, bad guys, that go on a redemption journey. And that redemption journey starts with them freeing guinea pigs from a laboratory where they're you know, doomed to suffer at the hands of experimenters. So we were cheering when we saw this moment and it's great because children are getting to 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 see the reality of what animals used in laboratories endure yeah is it does it have the power of really changing or having an effect on people's attitudes toward vivisection you think 
Well, it's an animated film, so we're not going to see any video footage of how realistic those horrors for animals used in testing for testing are. It's also tar- targeted for children, so it's going to be a pretty G-rated messaging. But we thought that it was lovely, and we hope that people will see it. We'll see. We'll see that um, people are outside of this laboratory protesting the cruel testing that is being done inside the lab and that they will connect with the main characters and their mission to free the guinea pigs. And so our hope is that it will get people thinking um, about vivisection and the realities of what's going on behind closed doors in these labs. So the bad guys wins the Test Students, Not Animals Award, which is great. So we covered some you know, films that maybe some people might have missed. They should catch because these are the movies that are worth focusing in on to get an animal message or to see how animal messages are used in Hollywood. But you do some traditional movies, too. Uh, let's go to Best Actor. Best Actor. Here's a guy who wins who's been in a lot of a lot of movies. Let's see. As I say that, I can't remember one movie who was in that. <laughs> uh, one of my favorites is The Fly. Yeah. The, oh, that's right. You know, I was going to say it was horror, right. A horror nut. You know, that's one that um that my boyfriend hasn't seen it actually. He just mentioned that the other day, and I'm like, yes, maybe yeah, we'll you a learned, double feature, you, a double feature of The Fly and Fresh. That would be yeah. a perfect. Here's the thing about The Fly. You learn all about uh, how flies digest their food. I mean, <laughs> when you realize that, you say, "Wow." You know. But anyway, the Best Actor Award goes to Jeff Goldblum. And why does he win? Why was he so good this year, Courtney? Yeah, Jeff Goldblum's character in Jurassic World Dominion uh, is awesome. He, uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm is his name. And Jeff Goldblum gives this powerhouse performance, delivering a speech about how humans don't have dominion over nature. So we were really excited and had to find a way to award this film for the anti-speciesist messaging that um, he delivers in this when he strips away his co-star's illusions of superiority. It's just fantastic. Well, anti-speciesist, that, that is really an important thing for PETA. And to have a message like that in the movies, in a mainstream movie, that's that's really, that's kind of a coup. That's like saying that the 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 values and the ideas of PETA aren't so far from the mainstream as people might think. Exactly. And you get to see it in play in Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, They do a really great job of highlighting what happens when people try to fool themselves into thinking that we can control nature and animals, in this case, dinosaurs. So it's a it's a really eye opening uh, film in that way. And Jeff Goldblum just really hit it home for us. Yeah. And we know now also that Jeff Goldblum is not a speciesist, having played a fly. So he's not speciesist at all. Yeah. He doesn't uh, he doesn't discriminate. He'll he'll do any role (laughs) regardless of what what kind of animal he's playing. Yeah, he'll take any role. Yeah. All right. Now, best actress. Who who got best actress in this year's Oscars? Oh, my gosh. Tilda Swinton got best actress. We just love her. Her performance in The Eternal Daughter was beautiful, fantastic. But the thing that really, really drove drove it home for us was the fact that she invited her canine companion to set. This isn't her first time doing that, actually. What people don't realize is that any animal used for film and television, whether that's a wild animal or a domestic animal like a cat or dog, they often suffer at the hands of abusive trainers, you know, and they languish in barren cages at training facilities. So what Tilda Swinton did here was she invited her own canine companion to set to ensure that he had a cozy bed at night to lay his head and really just lives a comfortable life. And that's so important for us. And her own dog is uh, Lewis? Yeah. I don't know if it's Lewis or Luis, L-O-U-I-S. Mm, but she, and... she has several dogs. And I can't name the films off the top of my head, but this isn't her first time doing that. And mm. so um, we just love her for her commitment to the animal's well-being and making sure that they have a comfortable place to lay their head at night. It's like take your dog to work day uh, for the movies. I mean, I mean, what we're saying. Yeah, we write to filmmakers all the time and we say, hey, if you have a dog in this, have a take your dog to work day. They will (laughs) love it. You know your dog better than 
than anybody. And what people see on a film set is just a tiny glimpse of the life of animals that are used for film and television. So while um, people might be on a film set and be like, oh, you know, I think that dog was fine. They don't realize what training techniques go into getting that dog to behave the way that they did. And they don't know what happens to the dogs afterwards. But when filmmakers uh, or actors choose to use their own companion animals like Tilda Swinton did, or like Bradley Cooper did a couple of years ago in A Star is Born, then we know what kind of life that animal lives and we know where they're going at night and we feel really comfortable with that. Great. So now a couple of other awards before, before we let you go, but the faux for fox sake, Oscat, who gets the faux for fox sake? Oscat. Yeah, so this is awesome. The faux for fox sake uh, Oscat goes to Ruth E. Carter. She is a costumer that works uh, tirelessly in Hollywood. She's always working. And for this project, it was Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So we are just so excited to celebrate Ruth E. Carter this year with the faux for fox sake award for always considering the animals when creating costumes for these big films. In this one, all of the fur that we see on screen is cruelty free. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I it's where I am right now as we speak, there's a bit of a cold wave going through the country. And I notice that okay, the cold is here, but I don't see as much fur. I see a lot of fake fur. I see a lot of people avoiding fur. That's a real thing over the last generation. That's a positive thing. And now it's like in the movies too. Yeah, that's the best thing ever. We're seeing a ban on fur. You know, they're not um, recently here in California where I'm at, they banned the sale of fur in stores. And so uh, we're starting to see people say, hey, that's gross. <laughs> it's cruel. We don't yeah. want any part in it. It looks neat. So why don't we just make faux versions that can yeah. keep people warm and look stylish? Uh, there's no reason for an animal to suffer for a coat. It's just silly. So Ruth E. Carter wins the Foe for Fox Sake Oscat for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. We're going to do one more. Uh, Jordan Peele, in, uh, he, he gets an award for, for Nope. And now a lot of people like uh, you know, his style of horror because it brings a kind of diverse message into the, the genre of horror. Uh, why does he get an Oscat? Yeah, Jordan Peele. We do love Jordan Peele, and we really enjoyed the film Nope. But what he's getting for the Oscats this year is our Primo Primate Award. Um, he's getting this because he and his team relied on humane technology to bring Gordy, the chimpanzee, to life and to highlight just how psychologically brutal film and TV sets can be for animals. This is the type of ingenuity that we absolutely love to see and celebrate. Yeah, so he, he's actually showing how strange it is for real animals by showing it through a cgi chimpanzee so that uh, you know that it didn't really go through the trauma but he shows the trauma so exactly. that exactly yeah. yeah and um, you know PETA and other advocates animal advocates successfully ended the use of great apes in hollywood so he had to use a cgi chimpanzee he could not use a real chimpanzee thank goodness but what we want to talk about today is the fact that primates such as capuchin monkeys and other animals are still exploited by misguided filmmakers. And so we want them to look to Jordan Peele's film to say, hey, this CGI animal is so beautiful. I mean, you go into the theater and when you first see Gordy, the chimpanzee, you're like, oh, my God, is that a real chimpanzee? But it, but they're not. It's a it's a CGI creation that's gorgeous super lifelike and there's no reason why other filmmakers shouldn't be doing the same and you can't tell the difference and not at all and, and once again for the uninitiated cgi is computer generated imaging and and that's a thing that's a thing and peter helped get that in and I imagine because CGI is so good now, it has probably eliminated the need to put real animals on the set by about 90% or so. Yeah, absolutely. There's no reason, I'd say 100%, there's no reason at all that people should be putting animals on set at all. And um, it, this opens up just a quick conversation about 
another film that did not win an Oscar this year, uh, this year, but we wanted to celebrate in the moment. This is uh, Cocaine Bear. So Cocaine, Cocaine Bear, Bear yeah. just came out like a week ago or so. And we were blown away at how stunning the bear in Cocaine Bear is. And we were just like, oh my gosh, is this a real bear? We had to write to ask. <laughs> so we actually wrote Universal and they confirmed that they were using CGI to create this bear. So we decided that we were going to do a one-off award. So um, Elizabeth Banks and Cocaine Bear did not qualify for this year's round of Oscats, unfortunately, but they were able to or we were able to bestow them with the honor of the Barry, get it, the <laughs> yeah, Barry yeah. Best Award, um, yeah. which really received a lot of great attention and was able to start conversation about the use of animals in film and just how cruel it is. So when you see something like the beautiful bear and cocaine bear or the CGI chimpanzee and nope, you, you know, I have to ask why are filmmakers still using wild animals at all? There's just no call for it. Yeah. And this is just a, another year i mean it's been going on for for a while and it is amazing how it gets better and better so there really is no reason to have real animals on the set and and to you know to to put animals in any kind of danger where an abuse uh, can occur so well you know uh, i want to mention this again because this is important uh, because there is a, a little disclaimer that oscar oscars academy award academy awards the registered trademarks of the academy of motion picture arts and sciences not affiliated or associated with PETA. And nor do, do they endorse, sponsor, or otherwise approve of PETA's Oscar. So this is kind of like a rebel awards kind of thing, huh? Yeah, this is our own thing. We're definitely not associated with the Oscar awards. However, we hope that some of the listeners uh, of this podcast may work in film and television. And what they can do for us is to please consider that if you're on set, and you see anything, an animal being abused, neglected, even just used in any way, something out of the ordinary, whatever it might be, we have an anonymous whistleblower hotline. They can call us. It's completely confidential and anonymous. If they're able to take photos or videos of anything questionable, they should do that. Reach out to us, and then we can help and make sure that that set is a friendly, uh, you know, is kind to animals. That's good. What, do you want to give out the whistleblower hotline number? Well, they can just go to PETA.org and they'll okay. find us on there, or they can email us at um, AFTV at PETA.org. That's good. That's good to know. AFTV at PETA.org. You know, uh, the Oscars are coming up. In, yeah, they're going to be happening this coming Sunday, March the 12th. And so, uh, you know, the big film that everyone's talking about, because it's kind of one on the run up, you know, everything, everywhere, all at once. E E A A O, everything, every, all at once. E E A A O, I call it, which is kind of like sounds like old McDonald. Uh, but uh, it's a big Asian film and it's exciting. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but you know, they had hot dogs. They had, uh, you know, they, and I don't know if they were vegan hot dogs, but maybe I, I think Oscar Meyer ignored uh, a letter that they sent to them about they wanted free hot dogs or something. But I don't know. Is uh, have you checked out whether the hot dogs and you know in the film are, are vegan? In a world where people have hot dogs as fingers, like that, that's an interesting <laughs> one. Yeah, I absolutely loved everything, everywhere, all at once. And we did reach out to the production, but not about the hot dog fingers. Uh, there were some animals in in everything, everywhere, all at once. So we just wanted to open up conversation with them to talk about that, and you know how moving forward, hopefully they won't use any real animals in future films. So as much as we loved that one, and I wish we could have awarded it because it was so <laughs> much fun. Uh, yeah. It's just a wild ride. You know, we weren't, we weren't able to find any positive. Well, we weren't able to award it due to the use of animals. And there was one storyline, which was kind of fun, but not necessarily award worthy. So, um, um, but we challenged them next year to make a film that's compassionate and kind to animals. And then maybe they can win an Oscat too. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to say the Daniels did their best to make uh Asian Americans, kind to Asian Americans uh, uh, in their film. And that's good. That was a plus. So, uh, and, and, you know, maybe next year in Oscat for the sequel to Everything Everywhere All at Once, the animal yeah. version. We're, I mean, we loved the uh, animatronic raccoon, right? So yeah. if they could just make all animals, if using animals, animatronic, that would be great. So again, we're not saying don't have animal depictions 
in your films, right? We're just saying if you're going to use animals at all, make them uh, CGI animals. Yeah. <laughs> you and know, have gonna... a stock footage or animatronics or some other kind of humane technology. Yeah. Or if you're going to use hot dogs, make them vegan hot dogs. For goodness yes. sakes. Yeah. Yeah. Just put a disclaimer. There were many disclaimers on the screen during everything everywhere all at all at once. So yeah. they could have easily said, hey, everybody, these hot dogs are vegan. Uh, yeah. but they, they didn't. So we we should probably write them and just ask, like, can you confirm were these hot dogs vegan? <laughs> I know they weren't Oscar Myers, though. Anyway, well, listen, always great fun to talk about the Oscats. And, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, it's sort of a fun way to talk about the the serious matter of animals and how animals are used in society, especially in these areas that are supposed to be fun and artistic and, you know, people may overlook being serious about animals. Absolutely. So we just say, you know, if people are going to go and see a movie or watch a TV show and they know there are going to be animals in that movie or TV show, we're asking them to please just don't watch it. You know, sometimes you know, sometimes you don't. But if you know there are animals in it, don't watch it because we need <laughs> to send a message. Um, right. We can skip it. And if they do want to watch those films anyway, then please just pay close attention because when we say we want to hear from everybody, that doesn't extend just to people working in film and television. We mean that for audiences too. So if you're watching a TV show and you see something questionable with an animal in it, please just reach out to us here at PETA. Let us know. You can also reach out to the filmmakers or the yeah. network or whatever it is that where that, that show is airing and you can let them know I don't want to see this. I don't want to see real animals in film. Please use CGI. We love CGI or just omit those animals. Peter's Courtney Penley on the Oscats. Go to PETA.org for more about the winners. And that's our show for today. Hey, thank you for listening. Don't forget to send a link of this show to your friends. Tell them you like the PETA podcast. Contact us at PETA.org. You can find me on Twitter at Emil Amok. That's E-M-I-L-A-M-O-K. Or see my vlog at amok.com. Or see my work at aldef, A-A-L-D-E-F dot org slash blog. The Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund. Once again, A-A-L-D-E-F dot org slash blog. Or if you're in New York City, you can see me off-Broadway, March 9th through 26th in Ishmael Reads The Conductor at Theater for the New City in New York City. Once again, thank you for listening. Check out all our episodes on your favorite podcast app or on Apple Podcasts, where you can subscribe to as well as rate and review the show. It helps get the word out about the issues you care about. Our music is provided by Carbon Works. Check them out on YouTube. And join us again next time for more insight into animal rights and the fight for a cruelty-free world on The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo.